try to accelerate this, this, this process. The legislature was, was good, agreed with our request for the, really a quarter of a billion dollars. That's a lot of money, $250 million. Uh, as you all know, there's 900 and some law enforcement agencies in the state, so there's a lot of money. There certainly is a, is a lot of need out there, and you know what we hear all the time is the violent crime. that, but there is flexibility in the bill, right, Andy, as far as other purposes? Yes, sir, absolutely. The, the primary purpose is addressing uh, the reduction in, in violent crime, reduction in gun crime, but we also want to make sure that the money's in there for you to, to take care of your officers and the first responders who have had to deal with so much uh, through the pandemic and throughout this year. So uh, great opportunity. Uh, the governor's uh, key word for the administration as we've worked with local agencies is transformative. We, we want this money to be transformative for you in the way that you fight crime and the way that you take care of your staff. So uh, in addition to the body uh, worn camera program that we're here to talk about, uh, the, the governor's been very supportive of your first responders and we just want to make sure that you're getting the money you need to, to address the issues in, in your neighborhoods. So, so I'm kind of interested in what, what you all are seeing from the law enforcement point of view or any of the, any of the chiefs, mayors, just kind of jump in. What, you know, what, should, what should we know uh, as far as what should the legislature know uh, as far as what you're seeing out there? Well, I know we're small, but we are very appreciative for the money to get these body cameras. We've talked about them for a long time in our department, but again, we're very small and haven't had the need, but in the last number of years, things have changed, so it's really a positive for us. I can imagine how the bigger cities and whatnot are thankful for it, but I, I'm very appreciative for it. It's really a good move by the state, and I think it'll go a long way around the state. I, I think there's real public acceptance of it. Uh, yes. I think there's uh, you know, more and more acceptance by police officers, and it's a transparency issue. Uh, and, and the reality is when something happens, public today expects it. Uh, you, you know, like 10 years ago, they didn't expect that. Today, they expect to be able to see that. Well, just to kind of piggyback off what the mayor said, we're, we're, we're small. We have 15 officers. I don't believe one of them is usually one of them. The is that right? Yeah. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and, I, and we have some old crappy veterans. So, um, the ones who were, you know, doing such much change. So, um, five years ago, they would have said, we have the same thing here, Governor, with, uh, with you, but we have uh, close to 100 officers, and uh, the officers, by and large, uh, support this, and we're seeing the school students at home with, with uh, the benefit of them. But you asked kind of what we're seeing, and uh, for Euclid, um, and many of the communities here, too, it's just the rise of violent crime, gun crime, and um, it's a real challenge, and it's, it's left a lot of death and misery. The Na nature of that crime is what? What is it caused by drugs? What's it caused? By? <clears throat> I think a lot of the, the driver for it is it's uh, much of it is uh, drug related, but a lot of it too is just uh, individuals or groups beefing over certain things and just resorting to to gun violence, just re resorting to extreme violence and just not respecting life. Who else? Governor, I would add to that. Mayor Blacko, Maple Heights. Good to see you again. Um, certainly, Maple Heights is a city that's changed demographically. So while my police force looks like my police chief, Todd Hansen, most of my residents look like me. So transparency is very, very important. Um, to just to let them know that that the police are there to as as protectors of the community. They're there to enforce the law and, and keep law and order. And the best interests of our citizens really are at the core of why police departments like Maple Heights exist. We have a great deal of domestic violence. Some of these crimes, as I look through the ambulance runs, precipitated by mental health issues, um, poverty, of course, the double-digit poverty, about a 20% poverty rate in Maple Heights. Um, and so our police officers often are there to just restore the peace. Uh, we're in instances of domestic violence, um, as this chief has said, um, really trying to keep the peace between Gangs and, and it's getting younger and younger. We've seen a great deal of activity at our, at our middle school. We have a very high profile case, and I'll let Chief uh, expand upon that. 
14 or not. I really can't add a whole lot to that, Governor, other than I would like to point out you asked what could the legislature do and make sure that the grants language stays open because the body camera is probably the least costly piece of it. I mean, that, that's a cost as well, but then the storage costs yes. and the redaction costs and with the public records laws, which are so open, which is good on the one hand, but it that costs a lot of time, manpower, and money to make sure that we can get these things out in the proper form. And uh, that, that that cost there is, is, is going up exponentially, whereas these costs are kind of fixed and, and at a certain level that, that's here. Everything else is going up yeah, here. You've, you've got storage costs, right? Yes, sir. I would add to that a little bit more, too, because I was just going to go for it. When you have this data and you have these videos, they also get requested by the prosecutor's office. So police department is spending a lot of time having to put all these videos on, on uh, flip, you know, zip drives, produce the documents, so that's costing more personnel and time yeah. for, you know, for Jackson, for, for the uh, police officers to do. It's, there's a huge benefit. It has been a great yeah, there's addition. there's a cost. It's a yeah, cost. but there's a cost too. So. Time's money. Yeah, yeah Governor, to, to reiterate what everybody here is saying, that was one of our major concerns. It's not a simply, it's, it's just getting the cameras and spilling them out onto the table and telling all, all the officers to grab one. There, there's a, a huge amount of things that have to be done, but one of the biggest things is public record requests, is dealing, managing this data. It's not the storage, even those are becoming more realistic or, or, or coming down in price, but it's managing data and having people, you know, that have to watch the videos, make sure what needs to be redacted. I was set up here. That's why my you're, you're welcome here. to uh, you can the right side right here. It's, it's just the just the phone. There's my mic cable that's our was our set up, so I, I didn't try to. It's all right. It's a little telltale sign. For a moment, man. For a moment. No. Thank you. Oh, you didn't miss anything. No. If we just got into that room one. Is there a mobile? Yeah, over here. Okay, you want to just do an audio? Yep, test? test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Mic test one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's great. Great.
affiliate side. I don't know what Rex calls it. We call it a new
have everybody just kind of line up right behind the governor here. ready? Well, I'm joined today uh, by Representative Kent Smith, uh, as well as mayors and chiefs of police uh, from Walton Hills, Maple Heights, Euclid, Brooklyn, and Gates Mills. Uh, we thank Euclid for, for hosting us today. Um, this is an opportunity for me to sit down and talk uh, with chiefs of police, as well as mayors uh, from sm some of our smaller communities and just listen to the problems uh, that they have in regard to law enforcement. We also wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of the additional uh, dollars that will be coming available in April. Uh, this was a bill that we asked the General Assembly to pass to take $250 million of the federal dollars uh, and devote them to law enforcement. Uh, the areas that we are emphasizing with this $250 million uh, is wellness for police officers, mental health issues, uh, violent and violent crime. Uh, those are the two uh, really kind of big things that this, this money is focused on. But there is a great deal of flexibility for local police departments and mayors to define how they want to want to spend that money. So we, we brief them on that money. Uh, these are also communities that have just received uh, the announcement that they will be receiving some money uh, for body cameras. Uh, we will have more announcements about additional communities getting money for body cameras uh, and more opportunities for communities to, to apply for body cameras. Uh, so that really was the, the purpose today. It's always good, uh, frankly, just to hear exactly what is, is going on in different communities. And even in uh, smaller communities, we still uh, can have violent crime. And what is true in our bigger cities is also true in our smaller communities. And that is that the people who are committing the violent crime are a small number of the criminal element. It is a small number of people. And if we are going to save lives and keep our communities uh, free of that, this violent crime, we have to really target uh, and go after uh, these individuals. And this is one of the reasons that we're asking the state legislature, I'm asking the state legislature uh, to, to pass a bill uh, that focuses on repeat violent offenders and would increase, dramatically increase the penalty that a judge could impose for someone who is a violent criminal, already been convicted, uh, who goes out and then is in the possession of a gun. When someone in Ohio is uh, convicted of a violent crime, they no longer have the right to, to own a gun and have a gun. Uh, we need to increase the penalty for people who violate that. And that's one of the, one of the bills that we have, we have asked the General Assembly to pass. So uh, more than happy to answer uh, any questions. I don't know if any of our mayors or chiefs want to say anything about any of these topics. We can, uh, anybody? 
Mayor, Mayor Chief, go yeah, ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Scott Meyer, Chief of Police of the Euclid Police Department. I just want to thank the state for their support. Um, you know, the police departments uh, across the nation, certainly here in Euclid, we're, you know, trying to do two things simultaneously. We're always looking to build trust and relationships with our communities, but we're also taxed with, with dealing with this, this violent crime. Um, so these kind of initiatives and these kind of, this kind of funding and support uh, really means a lot to uh, not only to, you know, city leaders and to the police department, but also to our residents, too. So I really want to appreciate it and, and thank the governor. Thanks, Chief. Anybody else? Um, we'll, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Is part of the debunking grant part, is there any language or thoughts on the strength of tax the grant so that the policy that the department implements when it has body cameras is up to the state liking state standards? Yeah, let, let, let me ask my team over here. Is, is, what, what, are the, what are the criteria, Andy? To, to get the here, here, you need, come on up here. <laughs> To, your name. I'm Andy Wilson. My title is Senior Advisor for Criminal Justice Policy for the Governor's Office. Thank you. The, uh, the precondition for getting these body board camera grants, the only precondition really, was that you had to be compliant with the Ohio Community Police Collaborative's body worn camera standard. Uh, and basically that says that you have to have a policy and, and certain aspects of, of your policy uh, have to be in line with uh, what the state is doing in the community police collaborative. So that's it. That was the only string, string attached to, to these grants. follow best practices, basically. Absolutely. Thank you. Anybody else? Look, I, th I think it protects the police and I think it protects the public to have body cameras. Uh, this is a question of transparency. Uh, we now have the technology to have body cameras and, and quite frankly, the public expects body cameras today. Um, we, we've kind of evolved in, uh, over the years in what uh, the technology is and this is keeping up with the technology. And again, it is one additional way to have transparency, accountability. Uh, police officers appreciate it because it protects them uh, as well as protecting the public. And look, the reality and the reason we did this grant and the reason we're going to do additional money is that this is not cheap. It's not cheap to have body cameras. It's not just putting a, a camera on a police officer and uh, telling him or her, you know, how it is turned on and how it operates. Um, this information has to be stored. It's very expensive to store this information. It also has to be retrieved. So when something occurs, news media wants to see it or someone else needs to see it, a court needs to see it, police have to go back. They have to have someone who takes time to go through it and pull out that, that point, in, point in time. So that it is not a cheap proposition and as we put out standards for the use of body cameras and it became more apparent more and more police departments wanted to use it they basically raised their hand and said look we want to use it but we can't afford it it's not, we, we can't afford not only just not to buy the cameras we can't afford to uh, store it we can't afford to pay somebody to pull down the data so it's an expensive operation it's not cheap Anybody else? Okay. Any questions for any of the group behind me? All right, everybody's happy. Good. Thank you all very much. Todd Hanson from Maple Heights. Uh, the transparency issue obviously is great. It is protection for officers. I mean, we found over the years the complaints that come in, uh, the officers are exonerated many times. Uh, people just, you know, maybe they misread what the situation was. It's a stressful situation usually. So it's a protection for officers. Also, the transparency for the community. Uh, but in addition to that, the courts have gotten to the point where any of the cases that we have uh, need to be adjudicated and, and it's only successful with body camera footage. They, they expect that. They want to see it. So it's very important from that standpoint that we have that footage to go ahead and get successful prosecution and enforce the laws that we currently have, which is uh, vitally important. 
great answer. Yeah. Anybody else? Okay. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Thank you. That, that wasn't easy. Did you manage to? Thank you, Mayor, for coming. Nice to see you. She's stuck on midnight right now.